Minnesota is the land of 10,000 lakes, filled with many sources of water. Living in St. Paul, the Mississippi River is our main source of water and a huge part of everyday life. Water is essential for all living beings and many people take our water for granted. So we wanted to learn about how humans and industries affect cleanliness of water. We decided to talk to experts and activists to learn the real impact and consequences of water pollution. We met with Kathy Champion, a water quality scientist, as well as Lark Weller, whose work focuses specifically on the Mississippi River. My name is Cassie Champion. I'm an environmental scientist at the Metropolitan Council Environmental Services, and I do water quality monitoring. My name is Lark Weller. I work for the National Park Service here in the Twin Cities on the Mississippi National River and Recreation Area. What I do is I test the water quality, the water flow, and the organisms that live in streams all over the Twin Cities metro area. And I'm our park's water quality coordinator. And in that job, I do a lot of coordination with our community partners, and I work with them to help understand the science behind the health of the river and to translate that and communicate that to the public. Clean water is critical to all of us. All of life on Earth absolutely depends on water. We're made out of water. Every living thing on Earth is made out of water. It's hard to imagine life without water. All the water that we have on Earth now is all the water that there's ever been on the planet, and it's all the water that we're gonna ever have. And if we don't take care of it, nobody else is gonna. We are all impacted by water pollution. The important thing to remember about water is that all water is connected. So we've got our rainwater falling, flowing across the landscape into streams. These streams are carrying their pollutants into lakes. The lakes are outletting into other streams, eventually get into the Mississippi River. Ultimately, the Mississippi River is carrying this pollution to the Gulf of Mexico. We here in the Twin Cities rely on the Mississippi River as a drinking water source. That's the only drinking water source for the entire city of Minneapolis and a number of suburban communities. So when we talk about water pollution, we kind of divide it into two main categories. One is called point source pollution, and the other is called non-point source pollution. If it's point source pollution, that means you can point at it. The pollution is coming from this particular factory or this particular uh, power plant. A, a bigger concern and what, what I'm trying to understand by studying the streams in the region is what we call non-point source pollution. Whereas non-point source pollution is far more difficult to manage because it's so diffuse and every person contributes to it in one way or another. In many ways the health of the river is better today than it has been in 40 or you know over the past 40 or 50 years but there are other ways in which pollution has been getting worse. So chemicals like Chloride, phosphorus, nitrate can affect both human and wildlife. Um, and it only takes one teaspoon of salt to permanently pollute five gallons of water. So if you think about how much salt is being put on our roads and driveways every winter, that's all being um, added to the river forever. Mercury is a pollutant that can um, accumulate in wildlife in the river. It can, it can be a neurological toxin. You would accumulate it if you were eating fish that contained higher levels of mercury. Microplastics are a pollutant that um, are now found throughout the environment um, worldwide. There are a number of different of forms of microplastics. I think people have heard a lot of microbeads because they were in um, things like facial scrubs. What we have found is that the most common type of microplastic in the Mississippi River is microfibers, and those are come those come primarily from uh, fleece, micro fleece, um, and it's sort of when you put that in a washing machine, it sloughs off, it makes its way through the wastewater treatment plant, but that's not designed to remove um, pollution that small. Wildlife like mussels and fish can eat those and um, think that they're full with nutrients, but they're actually full with these microplastic fibers. Who is most impacted by water pollution? The answer is always the people that live downstream. Midwestern, non-point source pollution, the kind of stuff that we contribute to that comes from our agricultural land, from our urban areas, is uh, causing a portion of the Gulf of Mexico, the size of the state of New Jersey, to be uh, completely unable to support life. 
and our pollution is going downstream and becoming someone else's problem. I think uh, the most important thing you can do is kind of raise awareness and care about it. Before we left, Cassie Champion showed us some tools that she uses to test the health of a stream. So if we want to understand the, the health or the water quality of a stream, we need to know kind of three main categories of information. We need to understand something about the physical properties of the stream, like the amount of water that's actually flowing. We need to understand the chemistry of the water. And we need to understand the, the biology, the organisms that are actually living in the stream and using it as their habitat. So I'll take a water sample like this and I'll turn it into a laboratory and they will run a whole variety of analyses on it and they will report that data back to me and I can use it along with the other water samples collected throughout the year to get a picture of what the stream's water quality is like. Now another really important uh, physical aspect of a stream to measure is the amount of water that's actually flowing in the river. So with this instrument I can take uh, a measurement of the total amount of flow that's going through the stream right now. When we know the amount of flow that's in a stream, we can pair that with our chemistry measurements and find out the actual amount of pollution. This instrument that I'm using is called a Secchi tube. This little disc with a black and white pattern is going to drop down through the water column until I can't see the pattern anymore. The Secchi depth of the stream is gonna tell me how deep down into the stream the sunlight can actually penetrate. And you can see I'm kind of lowering it and I still have a really nice view of that black and white pattern. So I know the water is nice and clear. Some amount of change over time is, is very natural. It's when a stream becomes overwhelmed by too much sediment, uh, too much uh, kind of, of this cloudiness. That's when this kind of sediment pollution becomes a real problem. Next, we decided to talk to Lee Fouché, the Environmental Justice Director at North American Water Office, to get a more personal perspective on the impacts of polluted water. My name is Leah Fouché. I am the Environmental Justice Director with the North American Water Office. It's important to have clean water because without clean water, we die. Plain and simply. The effects that water contamination can have on people is that everybody gets really sick and somehow you just don't know what it is. The short and long-term impacts of putting contaminants in the water, we have all sorts of cancer that nobody seems to know what the real causes are. You can't put a carcinogenic material into your drinking water and think that you won't get some effect. And in terms of radiation, nuclear radiation, there is no such thing as a safe dose. Mercury contamination is very much a problem in Minnesota. The Indigenous Women's Mercury investigation started back during Governor Jesse Ventura's tenure in office when his Pollution Control Agency commissioner decided that Indigenous people didn't eat fish anymore. Our thesis that people were in fact still eating fish and they were being uh, physiologically impacted by doing so. On the White Earth Reservation in the Home Health Agency and they worked with us, 95% of the people that we talked with were still eating fish. Those that are most affected are the women and the children. How does it negatively impact people? Mental and physical retardation, cerebral palsy, delayed walking and talking, behavior problems, learning disabilities, in severe cases, death. The reality doesn't go away just because nobody deals with it and nobody talks about it and everyone pretends it doesn't exist. If, in fact, Indigenous people want to survive, they have to stand up. And anybody and everyone that either eats food or drinks water or cares about the air and all the creatures has to stand up too. Wanting to help 
we contacted friends of the Mississippi River to use a stenciling kit. In the stenciling kit was a spray paint, a stencil with words to keep them clean, drains to river, and door hangers to hand out around the neighborhood. We went out and spray painted the message next to storm drains to raise awareness about the unfiltered and unclean water and substances that connect directly to our rivers. This is one small act that we hope will have an impact on our river and community to make it cleaner and healthier. You too can help by thinking more about the water sources around you, the things you're putting down, storm drains that connect to them, how much water you use in your homes. Water is important and it's our job to protect it. Who put the poison in the water? Who put the poison in the water makes me blue? Poison in the water. Who put the poison in the water? Kids in school. And still I find myself.